Hi folks, today we have this Hewlett Packard 3456A voltmeter to look at. Unfortunately, it's not very happy right now. It's displaying an overload. So let's take a look. So here's the display showing overload. When I press the test button down here, it should run its self-tests. What it ends up returning here is a minus four, which is an error code saying it failed on test four. The manual says that test four is where it zeroes the ATD converter and then tests to see this within a zero range. And apparently it's failing that test. Okay, let's take the cover off here and see what we have inside of this. Alrighty. Some cautions in here. Top cover. Some assemblies in addition to clean handle in order to avoid degradation. Okay. But what I wanted to see is, is anything loose in here? Anything that could be causing the kind of symptoms that we're seeing? Um, so far, I don't see anything here. I mean, let's open up the cover with all the warnings on it here and see what we find. Oh, slide it that way. Lift it off. Okay. Again, just looking in here, trying to see if I see anything loose. Um, so far, I don't. Uh, things look pretty tight in here. So upon further investigation, I found that um, these connectors here, and especially these two here, were not fully engaged. This board was bowed up a little bit here, um, possibly due to you know when it was transported or so forth. So. Uh, I reconnected all that, got that seated really well, took a good look at it. Um, there's some interesting old chips here, if you see those. Uh, you know, custom chips for Hewlett Packard, I'm sure. Um, but anyway, now when I turn on the unit, you can see that it comes up with measuring about minus 20 millivolts, but then it starts to count higher and higher on the millivolt scale here. Um, in the negative direction anyway. So obviously there's still something going on with this thing. So I will um, put back together the top end here since I've taken a good look at that. Take off the bottom panel now and see if I can see anything on the bottom side. Let's, uh, let's get this bottom cover off here. First thing is these little legs up here need to come off, but they come off quite easily. You just squeeze. Pull backwards and off they come. And then we'll take off this one screw here. And off comes the cover. And a similar warning type uh, cover on this side. And So the first thing is I'll you know, take a look over here. I don't see the same kind of loose problem here with these. Um, but let's take this cover off as well, even though it's warning us of all the bad things that can happen. We'll be careful. Okay. So looking at that, um, I see that these pins are coming all the way through. I see those pins coming all the way through. Um, so, so far, I don't see the same issue that was on the other side there. Um, there's a plate there, but um, everything seems to be solidly 
mounted. These little push pins are all the way in. So I overlooked something fundamental in doing my previous testing. Stupid! Stupid! Now I wouldn't go that far. Because all you of Earth are idiots. I had left the inputs open on the bolt beater and that allows the voltage to creep up uh, with the large impedance that this meter has. That's a common attribute and some online searching showed that that indeed happens with these uh, HP voltmeters from this era. Anyway, I'm going to now um, check against the fluke bench meter that I have here on top and see uh, how this thing measures some voltage. So I'm going to disconnect the short I have across the input here and you can see it starts to climb up again. I'll plug in the voltage source. I just have a HP uh, bench voltage source here that's turned on. So it's generating about four millivolts now which is too small for the fluke meter to read. So let's Creep the voltage input up a little bit here. All right, so they're agreeing pretty well there. Um, awful well. Yeah, it looks really good. Let's try a little bit higher voltage here. Yeah, once again, really good agreement between the two meters. And some a little bit higher voltage. Right on, okay. And up we go. Not within one digit there anyway. And a bit more. Oh, we're off scale on this one. Ah, right on, okay. So yeah, I think, uh, I think this is doing much better. And we found the problem and we fixed it. And I believe this HP digital voltmeter is pretty good. I'll continue, you know, trying out different ranges and stuff and make sure that it works on all of them. But I have a feeling this thing is good to go. So there you go, a pretty simple repair in the end. The moral of the story is check the simple things first. A surprising amount of the time, you'll find that what's wrong is actually something simple. Thanks for watching. <laughs>